Now, Chris, it probably hasn't escaped your attention that Tesla has updated its Model S and Model X, mm -hmm. which normally we wouldn't talk about a facelifted car, would we? But the interior is something a bit extraordinary. Have you seen the pictures? Yeah, is, it, is it legal? I think it might have got approval for the UK to be legal. This is the steering wheel. Yeah, we're so talking we're talking about, about so. a half steering wheel. And ever since someone of my age watched Knight Rider, we secretly always wanted a steering wheel like that, which mm. isn't a steering wheel. It's kind of more like a, a yokey thing yeah, from, a, like a, a, like from a, an aircraft. aircraft. It's no good for oversteer, so I'm out. <laughs> Look, it, it looks funky, but yeah. I, don't, I don't see how it's possible. And also, there was the, the usual arch comment from the uh, overlord of Tesla about how well, it, it's, it's going to be mostly redundant soon anyway, because it will steer itself. It's, this is the, the funniest, <laughs> it's basically going to steer itself. And also someone said, oh, and how do you select, you know, where's D, N and reverse buttons? Oh, you don't need those. The car assesses its surroundings and decides for you which direction you need to travel in. Yeah, non-sentient beings deciding whether they want to go forwards or backwards worries yeah. me. I don't trust horses, yeah. let alone a car. Exactly, so it's all a bit bizarre, but it's, it's Tesla But the performance figures. Yes. So the plaid played? Yeah. Plod? The, Whatever. The plaid plus. Any of the above. 1100 horsepower, 0 to 60, less than two seconds. Yeah. That's just going to be painful, isn't it? Already the crazy one in, in preposterous mode is, is uncomfortable. The problem with the electric car movement in, in performance terms is because the dynamics of the cars is so compromised at the moment, the only way they can demonstrate what they can do is just go faster and faster and faster, just accelerate faster mm -hmm. and faster. And it's a very much a short term thrill as well. If you've been in a Model S, that hit of acceleration, it's quite an experience. You, yeah, yeah. you want to experience it, but you don't want to do it more than But do you want once. to experience it or do you want to get a passenger in and show off? That's what you're doing, isn't it? You're yeah. getting someone in the passenger seat and going, yeah. watch this. Yeah, exactly. Where Tesla's miles ahead of everyone else, miles ahead quite literally is range. Yeah. So this Plaid Plus that comes out end of this year, 520 miles range. Apparently, you know, the new e-tron GT, 300 miles. Yeah, it's a it's, it's night, sort and of night and day, isn't and, it? And the real world testing people does bears this out. Tesla yeah. is miles ahead. Everyone I speak to that, that interacts with the Tesla, they think the vehicle's incredible, but it's the network. It's the network. The fact that you've got the supercharger network established and everyone always just says it works. It just works. And as we all know, car, personal transportation only works if it offers you, the user, infinite flexibility yeah. and the moment that you have to make allowances for the vehicle it's no longer a car yeah. it's just a thing that gets in your way right. so you might as well take an uber or, or or use public transport so there was a, a very interesting report wasn't there about volkswagen's current position in that marketplace a couple of weeks ago and it, it used lots of sort of putative monetary values and said where it's at how much money it's spent but the most telling statistic was how far behind in years the market felt volkswagen was from tesla and it was you know, seven or eight years, I think, or maybe even Crazy. more. And I, and I believe it. I think, yeah. I think Elon has got a huge march on everyone. And I know the valuation of the company is difficult to comprehend, but he's doing the job. He's doing it. And I just think range, I just think you're, you're coming into an electric car, as you say, you want the least amount of barriers, the least amount of stress going from your petrol or diesel car into your electric car. It does what, 500 miles? Yeah, that's plenty. I it is. Yeah. 300 miles, what? 250 real world, 200. I've never really understood range delivered in the context of miles or even in the context of time. It should be delivered in two ways. One, how often you need to wee yourself and how often your children need to wee. <laughs> well, those, that's when you stop. You've got the bladder of a camel. You've I have, said it quite I, a few I, times. I can drive most of the way through France and I don't need to go for a wee. I need probably 600, 700 miles, that's fine. Yeah. But my children, need to stop more frequently. So it's, it's the so they're average... they're going to have a Honda E, you see. I mentioned earlier Audi e-tron GT. Looks fantastic. Yeah, those arches, those creases, lots yeah. of muscles. I, and uh, if the RS6, weirdly, is looking less and less good looking to me on the road, I think the previous mm. one is a nicer looking machine. Yeah. This thing, wow. And you don't mind, you know, this is the first RS badge on a pure electric model, you're not... I think we're all over that, aren't we? Yeah. We're all definitely. over that. It's, I mean, a, it's, a, it's a Taycan with a slightly better looking set of clothes on. I remember you saying a while ago, you were sort of looking, you were sniffing around getting a Taycan. Yeah. You definitely said you were sniffing no, around a Model I, 3. I, am, I'm, um, I think in the next year I'll, I'll have an electric car, yeah. but I, I don't know which one it will be. Hart says I'd, I'd love to have a Taycan to drive, but mm. right now you'd have to have a Model 3 because it's got the network. But of course none of this matters because Porsche's bringing out the Taycan Cross Turismo, which is basically a wagon. Yeah, there so you go. Have that. So mm. I think um, Audi e-tron RS Avant. Which they'll do, won't they? They got it. 
Yeah. We're not going to let Porsche get away with it. No. That would be the one. That would, it would be. It would be lovely. It's weird, isn't it? We speak. It's nice to talk enthusiastically about electric cars. Yeah. But they're vastly expensive. Really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. What's the use value going to be like? Because the, surely the rate of development of these vehicles is now going to be exponential. So in yep. two years' time, you know, you will be able to buy one that's got double the range, and that surely means that last one. It's going to be like laptops in the 1990s. Oh yeah, totally. They've got to figure out a way to just slot out the battery, slot in the new tech, and you can go on your way. But with... how far, how long until we get to where we think we'll be, which is proprietary underpinnings? Mm -hmm. Now you just have a chassis that will do. Not everyone will have a car that does not 60 in under two seconds. We'll have a range of 550 miles. That's enough for everyone. And you'll 3D print your body on top. You will. You you'll just go. Like? You'll just say, I want a W124 Mercedes. Yeah. I, want it, I want it to look like a 500e, and be electric underneath. That surely that surely isn't more than five years away. I think it's a business idea, Chris. My mate Neil Yates is doing that with these 356s down in Cornwall. You know, yeah. he's got this little, he's got this idea of a really simple underpinning, and he's got a 356 body on top mm -hmm. of it. And I, I think there's some excitement there. I quite like the sound of it. Chris Harris excited by electric cars. Ish. <laughs>